So it is eight days into the year and I have not read anything yet. <laughs> I mentioned this in my last video, but I spent the first week of this year rotting in bed. Like the illest I've been in recent memory. I was so ill <laughs> and I couldn't read because I couldn't film and I couldn't read without filming it for you and documenting my first book of the year together because it's a very important occurrence. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing something I started doing last year and I think is gonna be a running trend where I do a first chapter, try a chapter tag to decide what my first book of the year is because I need a five star. We need this, this is essential. This is a crisis. I have a superstition. If I don't have a five star as my first book of the year, it's not gonna be a good year. I think I only had one year since like 2019 where my first book of the year hasn't been a 4.5 or a five and that year was not a good year. So it's like superstitious. It needs to be a 4.5 or a five and we're gonna find out together. And I've got some books and we're gonna try the first chapter of today and I'm very excited. Last year when I did this, I had three books in mind that like were very clearly, these are the three I'm gonna try out. I tried out Little and Bone by T. Kingfisher, Our Wives Undersea by Julie Armfield and Legends and Lattes by Travis Bowdry. I read Legends and Lattes in last year's vlog. It was my second favourite book of the year. Last year was a good year. <laughs> and actually I picked right based on the first chapter because the other two books were like a, like fours to me. They weren't fives. So hopefully we'll be able to pick right based on the first chapter of these as well. And this year I was struggling. So last year I had a very clear idea of what those three books were going to be. These are the books I'm going to try out as my first book of the year. This year I didn't really have a very clear idea. And so in my last reading sprint of the year of my patrons, we came up with a list together that is a good variety Variety. We've got a really good variety of books. We've got five books we're going to be trying out the first chapter of. So let me hand you back to that live show when we figured it out together. I, oh yeah, I haven't thought about this. Maybe we'll just, we'll chat about this in the next break in between sprints because I haven't decided. It has to be five star predictions. I'm hesitant to put bookshops and bone dust in there because I feel like the expectations are too high. Obviously Legends of Lattes was the one I chose first this year. I don't know. We'll discuss that, what books we think <laughs> should be it. Guys, we need to have a discussion about what what my first book of the year should be. What the three choices are. I don't think I should, I'm, I don't think I should put Books from Bone Dust in the top five because I think, I think there's a strong chance I don't love it as much as Legends and Lattes and I'm disappointed by it. I don't think I'm, I don't think I should even, I hesitate not even putting it in the three, let alone then choosing it as the book. How to Tell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I just got everyone in my family has killed someone. The last word's a good shout. The last word's a good shout. Maybe the last word. Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. Monstrilio. Maybe Monstrilio. Everyone in my family has killed someone. That is a possibility. Love Theor- That is a good mix. That is a good mix. Love Theoretically, Monstrilio, and everyone in That's a good, different but That might be it. Oh, Starling House. I think I'm going to enjoy it. But is it a risk for five? Like, I, maybe that's too much of a risk. Ugh. Oh my god, Emily, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. That could be a possibility. That could be a possibility. Okay, one of my family was a five star for me, but I don't think it's for everyone. Would be a good one to go in the video to do a taster of, but yeah. Interesting. You could try the first chapter of five books. Yeah. Yes, love theoretically, Monstrilio and everyone in my family. I think that's a good... I think that's a good choice. Okay, do I want to do five? Do I, do, do I want to add five so I add Emily Wilde's? Oh, the last word. Okay, maybe I'll add that instead of, okay, I'm gonna write this down so I don't forget. We are putting, love theoretically, we are putting Monstrilio, we are putting, everyone in my family has killed someone. We're putting the last word, then we're putting Emily Wilde's encyclopedia. Okay, I'm feeling good about that. I am feeling good about that, okay. Fun. So yeah, we have got two five-star authors. We've got Ali Hazelwood, Love Theoretically, if I want to start off with a romance. Ali Hazelwood, I think I gave Love on the Brain 4.5, but it really is a five. And I gave Love Hypothesis five stars. Ali Hazelwood is a five-star author for me. I haven't given her anything less than a five-star. So that feels like a safe bet, but I don't know if people have loved this one as much. Then we have got The Last Word by Taylor Adams. For me, No Exit is the perfect thriller. A classic. Classic. Not debatable. Not up for debate. It is the thriller. It is the thriller. <laughs> so I feel like this one would be a really good bet. I've heard it's kind of camp ridiculous. I think if anyone's gonna love it, it's gonna be me. So we got those two. And then I think we got three debuts, which 
I know it's risky business, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. We have got a fantasy with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Everyone read this last year and loved it. Everyone, I'm behind with the times. <laughs> but this is like if we want to go down a cozy fantasy route again, because we did that with Legends and Lattes at the start of last year. It could be a vibe where I read like a cozy fantasy at the start of the year always, because I feel like that's quite nice at the start of the year. We have got a horror with Monstrilio. Again, I have heard so many good things about this one. Everyone's been enjoying it. And there's just something about the cover. I'm going to be honest, it gives me five <laughs> feelings. It's one of the books I want to read most. And then we have got Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone for a Murder Mystery that is very meta. You know, I love a book that takes something to the next level that is imaginative. I believe the first chapter of this, I believe in the first chapter of this, you find out everyone in this family has killed someone. Oh no, and you also find out what pages murders are going to happen, which is very exciting. Some of these have prologues. I think for most of them I'm going to read the prologue and the first chapter. I think the last word has a prologue that's like 10 pages, so I'll probably just treat that as the first chapter. But this one and Love Theoretically have short prologues, so I'm going to read the prologue and the first chapter for those. We're going to get started on reading, but it's snowing outside, so Tom and I are going to go on a snow walk first. Hopefully it doesn't ruin my makeup too much. We're going to go for a nice little walk in the snow, and then I'll come back and get cosy and start these books. But yeah, this is actually my first time filming since I've been off ill in like two weeks, although you will have seen a video before this. This is my first time filming, and like, it's like we never left, but also I don't know, how am I doing? <laughs> feels very strange. It's going to feel very strange to read, but then I'm just going to probably read most of the day, do some Patreon stuff, but mostly read. So yeah, I'll see you in a little bit once we start reading the first chapters. Okay, we're back from the walk. It like stopped snowing as soon as we went out. And it was like, it, well, it carried on snowing, but it was so fine that the camera wouldn't have seen. So we're back and we're going to start reading the first chapters of these bad boys. I'm just going to pick one up and begin. Should we just get into it? I'm excited to get all cozy and to read for the first time in like two weeks. What is going on? Okay, let's start and I'll read maybe two or three first chapters and then let you know my thoughts. So I just read the first two chapters of two of our books and we're in trouble because we've already got two very strong contenders. <gasps> what? No. What? No. I'm a little bit concerned. <laughs> So first I read the first chapter of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia for Fairies and I don't know much about what's going on. Our girly has traveled to somewhere, uh, I want to say Norway, somewhere in that bracket of place <laughs> vibe we're getting. She's traveled there to study fairies. She, she's writing about them, she's studying them. And it's written from her perspective that she breaks the fourth wall and addresses us as a reader. So like early on, it's like, um, as with previous journals, I would presume a basic understanding of dried, dried dadology, oh dryad, 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 um, in the reader. <laughs> Though I will gloss certain references that may be unfamiliar to those new field. And I just love that. I, I love that. I just love that. I love when a book is like self-aware and is like a thing. Like she is writing her journal of her studying and she's directing, she's talking to us directly. Emily, Emily, <laughs> speak to me. I know, I loved the writing style of this and she just finds this little cottage where there's a sheep in it and it's her and her doggy and they're gonna go study fairies together. And I really, really enjoyed it. That's a strong contender. And then I read the first chapter of Love Theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood and guys, we're, we're, in, we're in trouble because I'm eating it up. Okay, here's the thing. We know me and Ali get along. <laughs> we know I love her, but there's just something about the chemistry of this one. I'm just eating up straight away. I like love I love the couple straight away. I love them. 
the obsession that I got with it was was borderline unhealthy. I don't know how I'm going to integrate in society after this. <laughs> this one, I thought it was fake dating again, and I was like a little bit concerned because love hypothesis was fake dating, and I was like, why are we doing that again so quickly? But our girly is like a a girlfriend for hire. She's a fake dating you know, professional. <laughs> She's a professional at it. But the romance is gonna be with the brother of one of her favorite clients. Ooh, and like the first chapter was just, was straight in at the deep end with her going to an event with that client and seeing the brother there and like, ooh, I'm already eating up their, their chemistry. Ooh, ooh, the way they spoke to each other. He's like trying to, you can tell he knows. He knows his brother in dating this girlie because this girlie's meant for him. And he's like trying to catch her out in the lies. And he does catch her out in the lies because she don't know shit about this guy. And he's like, what is this? And she says it's sciencey, but it's a meditation retreat. And he's just, he's connecting the dots because he's like, this is the girlie for me. There ain't no way my brother's dating her when the, the cosmic fates have aligned that me and her <laughs> should be together. So I'm really enjoying both of these from the first chapter. What? I... And these are all pretty strong contenders. I'm just gonna go read the first chapter of these now and then I will check in with you. I'm just gonna like speed run these three. But I, I, I don't know what to do with myself because I thought I was gonna... Like, this is gonna be easy. I don't think this is gonna be easy. I think this is... There's gonna be a lot of good first chapters. <laughs> oh no. Okay, this is like, we're really, this is a problem because these were maybe all five star first chapters. I don't know what to do, <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Thank you. That's all, I, I don't know what else to say. Thank you. It's, it's amazing. It's so amazing to me. This is just mind blowing. Let me review them and then we have to make a decision. So, Monstrilio, I hate this is <laughs> this first chapter opens up. We get it, we get straight into it, right? We don't hesitate. <laughs> dive straight into it. All of these first chapters, I feel like we're actually really good at diving straight into it. Anyway, this first chapter, our protagonist's son dies, like child son dies. And her and her husband are there with him when he passes and they're grieving and she decides she wants a piece of him and that piece is, is part of his lung. So she cuts him open and, and gets part of his lung. So if you saw my face, I was like, <laughs> You know, when it comes to when, when it comes to me in horror, I do tend to read campier horror, as we know, and this was quite intense from the get go. So I don't know if this is like a five star prediction for me personally. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like this is very different to other horror I tend to enjoy. But I did love this first chapter. I thought it was in incredibly engrossing. I could already feel the grief seeping out of the page. I don't know if it's a bit depressing. I feel like it's going to be very sad and about people dying and grieving them. But I think it's going to be a great book. I just don't know if it's the, the tone to hit the start of the year off with. Then, if you ask me my prediction of what I thought was going to I was going to choose out of this five. My prediction probably would have been everyone in this family. Everyone in my family. I was going to get the title wrong. Everyone in my family has killed someone. And this one, there is a prologue where it tells you 
Oh, I love it. It tells you all the pages at which a murder is going to occur and kind of sets up the rules and sets up like how this is like a self-aware murder mystery. Oh my God, it's so good. And then we get into the first chapter of his brother killing someone. I just love the meta-ness. Like I always say, guys, I always say, I feel like now to get a five star from me, the book has to take a genre and imagine it in like a new and fun and exciting way. Do you know what I mean? It has to push the boundaries of the genre. And that's exactly what this is. It's meta, it's taking make taking the mick out of it. There's like a quote from the Detection Club at the start. I just love it. I love it. The Detection Club is like um it was a club of writers in the golden age of crime of like Agatha Christie was one, Dorothy L. Sayers was one, my guy, Anthony Berkeley my first ever solving video was one. So yeah, I loved that. And then there was like a rules of murder mysteries and then like the book is gonna flow the room. Ah, oh, I love it. Got the stage presence, I've got the voice, I've got the looks and I just have everything and I know I have. However, I don't know if there was too much pressure on this one and me thinking it was gonna be the one I was gonna pick, but I don't know if the right, I'm overthinking it. Like if this had been another selection of books, I would absolutely be picking this, but I'm, I've got a, I've got too much choice. <laughs> yeah, there's something about the writing style that I don't know if it was 100% for me. And then, I mean, I've loved it. I'm overthinking. I'm just like, is this five star, five star, five star writing for me? Do you get what I'm saying? Even though it probably is. Oh! I'm struggling. And then we have The Last Word by Taylor Adams, where our girlie has just read this, the most terrible book she has ever read <laughs> in her life. And she goes Amazon, one star. Yep, one star. Laugh out loud. And like says how shit this book is. And he, the author of the book is like, take it down, bitch. <laughs> no, he starts off a bit friendlier, but by the end he's like, Take it down, bitch. And from what I know of this story, it's gonna be like a bit of a, I think he's gonna like stalk her. I don't know. But the idea, I just love this idea. As someone who reviews books <laughs> online, sometimes in a not very favorable way, I try to always be on it. Like, honest. I don't want to lie and say I liked a book more than I did just because I don't want to be mean, right? But I try not to dunk on a book unnecessarily and I try to meet books where they are. But sometimes I'm doing, sometimes a book stinks and I'm going to say it and sometimes people don't like that, you know? There's always people on fourth wing, the fourth, the fourth wing vlog, like, she's stupid. <laughs> she um didn't understand why there was that info dump, but it makes total sense because it explained. Just because you explain why the info dump is there doesn't mean it it's valid or validated. So the idea of this book is incredible. I don't know what... <laughs> Generally, it's like ip dip do between all five. Okay. Ah! Okay, I'm overthinking this. Let me take a quick moment to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video. Serious Readers, my Serious Light, which I used to read all the first chapters of this book, has helped me out filming this video this evening. So let's cut to Megan thanking the sponsor, who I love because I love my serious light more than life itself. I love my serious light so much and I cannot tell you guys how important it is to me in achieving my reading goals this year. Listen, it's new year. I love a new year. I love a new year. And I, for the very first time, read 150 books ever <laughs> in a year last year. And I generally feel like my serious light had a lot to do with that. It was my first year owning it for the full year. And I cannot tell you how much quicker this makes me read, how much more enjoyable it makes reading. I cannot read without it. I can't read without it, I refuse. <laughs> I'm incapable of doing so. So something great about Serious Lights is they have daylight wavelength technology which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible. And what I find this means is that it's so gentle on the eyes. It makes reading such an enjoyable experience. I used to get eye strain all the time, all the time, especially when I lived in Leeds, I used to get eye strain all the time. And I think it was from reading so much in dimly lit areas. I like a, I don't like the big light on, <laughs> I like lamps on. But that then meant that I wasn't reading in like well lit circumstances. And this means I get the best of both worlds. It's a cozy reading experience, but at the same time, it actually is good for my eyes. <laughs> and I have a code for you guys for new year, which is SR440, which will get you a hundred pounds off off a high definition light. It is such a good deal. A hundred pounds off. Guys, go check out the link down below. Use my code SR440. I cannot recommend this enough. I use it every single day. Well, I haven't been reading <laughs> for the past two weeks, like I said, but now that I am going to be reading, I was about to show you what the book was because I have, I'm filming this after the last clip because I want a little teaser, but 
you don't know what it is yet. I'm gonna be using it <laughs> reading all the time when I'm reading this book over the next couple of days. And listen, it's dark all the time at the moment. And so I'm using it literally, I use it in the day because it's it's never sunny. It's never light outside. It's essential to me all day, every day. So go check out Serious Readers down below. I cannot recommend it enough. You guys need to get your hands on one of these because it has genuinely revolutionized my reading. Okay, if I'm honest with myself, I think I'm gonna narrow it down. I don't know if I'm just not including this because I expected so much because I expected to pick this. But I think it's between these three. Fuck, guys, I don't know. Okay, this one is reliable because I always give Ali close to five stars or thereabouts. And it would be a fun start to the year. This one, with Taylor Adams, I've given him a five star. I also read Hairpin Bridge by Taylor Adams, which I absolutely hated. Maybe the book was based on me. <laughs> I hated Hairpin Bridge. So it's not reliable. It could go either way, but I think this is gonna be fun, right? I don't think it's gonna be necessarily the greatest writing I've ever read, but it's gonna be ridiculous. It's gonna be fast paced. This is gonna be a more gentler, softer, softer, cozier reading experience. I genuinely don't know. I can't. I can't make this decision, please. I can't make this decision. Hang on. Tom, I'm filming a video to choose my first book of the year, which has to be five stars. Because if I don't have a five star book for the first book of the year, I'm not gonna have a good year. So I read the first chapter of all five of these books and they're all like five star chapters. Oh, that's good. So, I, but I don't know which one to pick. I think I've narrowed it down to these three. So, Ali Hayeswood, I always tend to give five I stars. That she loves the doctor, doesn't she? Yeah, she all stem. Oh, good. Seminist, all, all sciencey romances. Um. Seminist, <laughs> I like that. Taylor Adams is a thriller about a book reviewer who gives a one star review and an author who stalks her and like wants to oh. kill her. Taylor Adams wrote No Exit which I loved, mm. but mm. wrote another book that I didn't love. Mm. And then this is a debut and it's like a cosy fantasy about this woman who's like cataloging fairies and it's like written. I didn't go with that one. Do you? It sounds like it's got the coffee shop vibes. Yeah. Cataloging fairies sounds quite interesting. Okay. You didn't want that? No, I think I did want that. Okay, look at me, I'm a genius. In here. I can't believe that. I actually can't believe that. Thank you. That's my switch. Should I show them your switch? Uh, you've taken all. It's, <laughs> it's a bit smashed up. <laughs> well, I was showing them all the, the EV control. Well, I've got an EV Pikachu switch. Everyone, they can't be hating. Oh, it's gone on Show them that uh, uh, I've been playing. Show them the game we've been playing. Okay, so whilst I've been ill, we, we were like, what can I do? What am I capable of? So Tom and I... I've been playing this game non-stop. As recommended by Erica. As recommended by Erica, one of the travellers on the Costa Rica trip. Can you load? And we've just been playing it non-stop, but we haven't been getting any better at it. It's these little fruits. I don't know if I can play it. <laughs> I don't know if they can see. I've got to hold it at an angle. They can see. You can drop these fruits. And, they... <laughs> and we've just been playing it for hours, but we don't get any better at it. <laughs> We both sit there and our Switch is playing next to each other. This is my strategy. <laughs> That's not your strategy anyway. You can take it. Oh okay, bye, love you, bye. Okay, I'm gonna be reading Emily Wilde then. Is that what I wanted? I think it is. I think in my deep heart of hearts, this is what I wanted, but I was doubting myself because it was the first book that I read the first chapter of. But I think I'm gonna go with it. Yes, I am starting a new series. We don't need to talk about that. We don't want to oh, oh, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. oh, sorry, oh, darling. We're so yeah. sorry, we didn't realise. Oh. We don't talk about the three of the other ones. These were standalones, and I'm starting the off of the series. We don't need to talk about that. We don't need to talk about that. Because I haven't made my goals video yet. I could actually pretend that finishing series is not a goal of mine. I could do that this year, if I wanted. Anyways, I'm going to go read this. I'm very excited, actually. I think this is a good good start to the year and I think cozy fantasy is how I might start the year every year because like I just I do love cozy fantasy and it feels very you know it's midwinter guys we actually shouldn't be setting goals we should be hibernating <laughs> that's not how I operate but I've been speaking for way too long I'm gonna go read <laughs> Emily Wells it's like reading for fairies I'll let you know when I'm a little bit of the way through <sighs> okay 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 <laughs> Okay. I'm 95, 96-ish pages into Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia, I always get the title wrong, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, um, which is about a third, about a third of the way through. 
and I'm really enjoying it, but I'm getting very anxious it's not gonna be five star and it's it's troubling. <laughs> it's I'm getting worried. Yeah, I'm getting worried it's not gonna be five star. But I've gotta I've gotta tamper that because here's the thing. When I did Legends and Lattes last year, it was just immediately so obviously a five star. Like it was my second favourite book of the year. It was beyond a five star, right? It was a five star plus if that can exist. Whereas this might be a five star, but it might not be five star plus. And you know, not every book is immediately a five star and you can't get too anxious about it. You can't worry about it. You just gotta let it live. You gotta let the book breathe. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. In terms of the plot, you don't really know, need to know much more about this, is that Gurley is writing in an encyclopedia of fairies. She's writing about the fairies and maybe her academic rival has maybe turned up. That happens at like the 60 page mark. I don't think that's a spoiler, it's in the synopsis. I, this is like minor spoilers. Well, it isn't spoilers, I'm, I'm at the point that I am in and I believe the, I always believe the first third of the book isn't spoilers, right? I think, it, I think it's pretty obvious from the synopsis and from what I've never read in the book that this dude is the love interest, right? Cause this is kind of romanticy. I've seen some people call it romanticy. I'm not live, laugh, loving. I'm not, I don't like this guy. I don't like him. Oi! He's not meant to be in here. Has he got in here? Get out! When I started the book, I hadn't read the synopsis and I thought the romantic scene might be with this other guy who's like this guy in the town that she's gone to visit, but he might be a bit young. I didn't, it, it wasn't clear. The ages were clear. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with an age gap romance. I mean, he might be like 15, I don't know. I thought he seemed older than that, but who knows. But it was, it's become clear it's gonna be with this academic rival who's like followed her there. And I just don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like this man. This man can get off the pages of my book. And I, he's what I'm getting concerned about because if it turns into a romance between them, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. I'm not, I'm not into it. <laughs> However, there are a lot of plus points to this. I'm loving the nature of the book. I'm loving her going and investigating all these fairies and meeting all these, I don't know, fae, fairies? What's the right thing? Fairies? Yeah, fae, but it's like fairy, fairies. It's not just fairies, it's fairies. You know what I mean? There's a certain je ne sais quoi around this spelling of fairies. Yeah, I'm loving her meeting them and like getting to know the customs of them. And guys, something that I forgot when I read the first chapter because so it wasn't in the first chapter, is there's footnotes. If you know me, you know I love footnotes. I love footnotes. I love, 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 love footnotes. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. Especially I think it does work for me in a fantasy because it really, it gives so much gravitas to the world building. And I think I like that. Like it makes it feel so real. It makes it feel so important and official. You know, the world building. The same thing happened in Babel for me. And I just, oh, I get so excited at the thought of footnotes and this footnotes. They, was, they started like just after the first chapter and I got very excited at the thought of them. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm getting anxious about it, but about whether it's five star or not. However, if Wendell, Wendell isn't very a very nice name. Bamble, ba Bamblebee. Bumblebee is his last name, that's more dashing. If he wins me over, if the romance wins me over, that might be a story to tell. That might be a moment, you know what I mean? That might be an important moment. So we'll see. I'm feeling anxious about it, but I'm probably gonna end up finishing this tomorrow. So I shall see you once I've once I've made progress, but um, <laughs> just getting a bit anxious about it, you know? I'll see you when I'm about 200 pages in, so like another third of the way in. Several days later. Uh, I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. It's been days. It's been days. And I am now on page 205 of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And I'm still not, I'm not loving it. Now here's the thing. Right, okay. Can I focus, can you focus on me, please? My camera just. I remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. Here's the thing. I have struggled. I don't feel like I'm back into reading yet. If you don't know, <laughs> I took like a week at the end of last year off of reading to like be fresh for the new year. But then that turned into like two, almost three weeks of not reading because of when I was ill. And I generally, I just feel like I don't know how to read. I've forgotten how to read. I can't do this. There's just something about this. Maybe I, I feel like I'm overthinking it, right? I feel like I'm like, I have to love it. I have to love it. I have to love it. Oh my God. What if I don't love it? Like I, it has to, I have to love it. <laughs> that is making me overthink it and is making me place too much pressure on it. But I'm I'm just not connecting to it. I don't like Wendell. I don't like him. I find him incredibly annoying. I'm sorry. I think we should have that conversation. 
And I picked up the audiobook. I was like, okay, right. The audiobook has got to save this. Usually for the first book of the year, I wouldn't listen to an audiobook. I would just like sit down and like cozy up with a book and like get into the vibe. I, I don't like the audiobook, but I'm having to listen to it because I, otherwise I'm just not reading it. I have no inclination to pick this up. I think I should have gone with like, I think I should have gone with Love Theoretical, The Last Word, because both of those would have been like propulsive reads, right? That you can't put down because it's a romance or it's a thriller. I'm like, fucking memory card is about to run out of battery. Give me, Lord, give me strength. One second. As I was saying, what was I saying? I don't know. I don't think I made the wrong decision. I made the wrong decision. I've just made a massive mistake and now I'm really annoyed. Part of me was like, oh, should I DNF it and read all the other ones? Because then technically that would still be my first book. Yeah, but I'm not doing it. That's not the point of this video. Based on the first chapter, this is generally, I know Tom picked it for me, but this is what I was going to pick. I was just wondering if I was picking it because it was the first one I read and thus it felt the most fresh because it was the first thing I read, you know? But yeah, and I gotta be honest with you, I gotta level you guys. Something's happening in my life. <laughs> Pretty great, great. I spoke about this in the reading goals video, but I cut it out because I didn't feel like a good job of speaking about it. And also I didn't know if it was gonna happen at that point. It's been all very up in the air for the past week, but basically me and Tom are moving across the country in like five days for two months. <laughs> I know I've mentioned us um, buying a place together. This isn't that. We're not buying a place. But he's just got, has to go there for work for two months. And so I'm moving with him. And I've got to like pack all my life up. Got to decide what books to take. This is a very stressful situation. <laughs> it's very exciting. I'm very excited. But like that is going on behind the scenes. And I feel like I just can't do anything until we go. We just need to go. You know, I need to pack all my shit and go. Until then, I'm kind of living in this limbo. The year hasn't really begun for me, it feels like. Because I was ill. And then this has happened immediately after that. And so even though it's exciting, I just feel like I can't really begin my life until we're there. Do you know what, does that make sense? I don't know. But yes, the, there's something about this that just isn't connecting for me, but I'm gonna try and let go of that. I'm gonna sit down now, because my reading has been very broken up during these past 200 pages. This last 100 pages, I'm gonna sit down and like make a real focused attempt to read and read well. <laughs> and we're gonna have fun. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sit here. I'm not gonna leave this spot in my bed until I have finished this book. That is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this together. You're not gonna see me. You'll see me in like an hour when I finish the book. But um, yeah, we're gonna finish it. We're gonna finish it. We're gonna finish it. And I'm gonna love it. And I'm gonna get into the coziness. I think perhaps, I mean, I didn't love, what was the other cozy romance I read? I enjoyed but didn't love Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. And I'm just feeling similarly about this. I think I like my cozy fantasy to be sans romance. It just, I just don't, I just don't like the romance to be at the center of it. I don't, I'm gonna go finish it. I'm gonna go finish it. And if my first book of the year is not five stars, we're not gonna allow that, for, like, for me to think the year is gonna be terrible. Because I do, I will think that. And we're not gonna, I need you all in the comments telling me I'm gonna be okay and I'm gonna have a wonderful year. I'm gonna have the best year of my life. What an exciting year. <sighs> okay, I'll see you in a bit once I've finished it. Two hours later. <laughs> I don't wanna talk about it. Yeah. It's not. It's not a five star to start the year. <sighs> Everyone, we've got to let, we've got to let go of that. We've got to let go of the, the suppositions. Um, I do love starting the year with a five star. Alas, I made the wrong choice. I wonder if any of those other four would have been a five star. Because this, I'm going to give a three. Also, this is a bad start. I would have been happy if it was a four. Because if you know, my goal this year is to have above a 3.8 average rating. Just starting on a three. I just feel like I'm the same as Yeah, I just didn't love this. I just, this is a spoiler, I'm gonna put spoilers up on the screen. Mild spoilers for the romance here. But I just can't get behind a romance where like, my guy is out here sleeping with every girl in the village and then proposing to her under the same roof and expecting her to be like, yes, you know? I just don't, I just can't. Like if a, if a guy in a romance is like, oh, he was a serial philanderer or whatever. But like the idea of her seeing village girl circling in and out of his room and then being supposed to be like yeah i just felt no connection between them ever okay spoilers over yeah i just felt no romantic i did not feel the feels for this romance i'm anti this i'm not anti this guy i'm anti him in this romance i just can't i can't i can't vibe with it and perhaps this is something to do with fae and like fae tropes i'm just not i don't think i'm very well versed in fae <laughs> fantasy. I don't think I've read a ton of it. So some of this could be the author expecting you to go into it with like a certain level of understanding of the tropes and style and me just not having that. But girls, 
it's pretty sad out here for us right now. Yeah. I, I mean, also, I think part of this issue was it was maybe just wrong place, wrong time. Not the book. <laughs> the saying. Where I can imagine myself enjoying this in a different circumstance. I think just me having gone so long without reading, I should have picked a fast paced thriller or like an Ali Hazelwood, which I know there isn't an entry level um, difficulty with that. If I'd picked an author I'd read from before, like Taylor Adams, Ali Hazelwood, I think you, you're you not spending the first part of the book like trying to figure out how you feel about the writing, whatever, you kind of just fall into it easier. And I think I should have done that. <laughs> because I just think this was a bit slow. I thought there was some issues with the pacing. I didn't particularly like the ending. I feel like it dragged. And I don't think that's just because I read it slowly. I think this could have been quicker, right? I think it could have been quicker. It's 300 pages long, but the audiobook is like 12 hours long. And I always think audiobook is a better judge for time. You know what I mean? Like the audiobook for this one, I was looking it up because I got it as well, because uh, it was on sale. <laughs> um, the audiobook for this one is nine hours long, right? And it's like, 370 pages but just because of the pacing and the and the size of a font in the book it can massively differ right so i think audio order <laughs> i think audiobook size is a better judge for that anyways um i'm gonna go cry this is the worst this is the worst this is the worst mm -hmm. yeah I'm gonna go cry. I'm gonna go cry because also the next book I'm reading I don't think is gonna be a five star because it's for my book club and people haven't been enjoying it. <laughs> but I'm gonna go cry. It's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna have a great year. Please send me all the positive vibes and positive thoughts because I need it. Because <laughs> I'm feeling so very superstitious. Maybe my new year begins now. New year begins now. New year. But also I don't, my next book isn't going to be five stars. So that's besides the point. But anyways, I love you guys. Let me know what your first book of the year was and how the year has been going for you in terms of reading. I cannot believe I've made it two weeks into the year and I finished one book. But alas, <laughs> that's my life. But I've got to speed up now. I've got a lot of videos planned for the next couple months that are very exciting. So I've got to speed things up a little bit. But thank you guys so much as always for watching. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.